Guten Abend. We're going into Squin versus Conflict. Kyogre lead versus DOS. Now, Conflict is an old school DBP Ubers player who played it when it was the current gen. So he might be running Sash Deoxys Speed. And uh, we've seen uh, one or two DOSs actually putting Sash on again because of the surging popularity of Kyogre lead. So, uh, if it's bulky or if it's Sash, well, bulky as in more bulky than most DOSs, because you really have to go out of your way to live a uh, Surf from Kyogre. And if it's Hydro or Water Spout, then just forget it. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's where it stands. This, it used to be that Kyogre wasn't used because it gave up two layers to DOS, but it, uh, then DOS starts, or stopped running, uh, Sash, and, uh, Long time after that happened, then people realized, hey, this DOS thing is kind of hard to KO, but it's not going to live Kyogre. So, uh, it depends on the sets both players have. Either way, DOS is hazarding and Kyogre is attacking. So, there's Hydro, and it is uh, Sash DOS, so the old school has once again become the new school. Funny how that happens in Pokemon, as Squins Kyogre has Hydro Pump to make sure no DOS is living that. So, there are rocks. And here come spikes. So now, with the, what's the follow-up going to be for conflict? The cool thing about Kyogre Lead is even if you give up two to DOS, then uh, if if you're so inclined, then you can just stay in on the Latios or whatever to follow up and T-wave it. So you're at, you at least got a lot of your ogre to make up for the fact that you are starting the game with such a hazard deficit. So, but that's uh, if you're so inclined, of course. And here comes Diaga. You can try something similar if you like. Or you can just attack it with Hydro. And incidentally, this is why I love specs on Kyogre in the lead slot. Not always, but just imagine how much that Hydro would have done. So, uh, this Kyogre, or this Dialga starts bulking up. And generally, you don't see bulk up Dialga on uh, DOS hyper offense stuff. Because bulk up Dialga sets are, you know, the rest talk or the sub uh, pressure stall. The subsets that really uh, take pressure. Uh, or really take advantage of pressure, rather, then those are more on slow pace balanced teams. And bulk up can be used on offensive teams. Uh, like if you're running bulk up, Draco, Outrage, and a Fire Move, then you are more resilient to Earthquake and you hit Blissey harder. So it's possible that it's that. Uh, but w that's also more common with uh, without lefties, with like uh, l some sort of Resist Berry or Adamant Orb. So uh, who's to say? And the Kyogre starts Calm Mining, so that's something else we haven't really seen. Well, there's Outrage uh, in on uh, Kyogre in the lead slot thus far, but it's a perfectly good option, especially since this Kyogre also has lefties, and lefties alone on Kyogre uh, go a long way. We've seen lefties used to you know passively bump Water Spout's base power back up, which is a very cool application. And uh, Calm Mine makes sure that nothing really truly walls Kyogre. Uh, so... Even Blissey can succumb, so there's a big plus one Hydro, and uh, Dialga's going to take it out. But Kyogre took out a Pokemon, and then a three quarter, then three quarters of another Pokemon. So uh, whether uh, Squin can, it's uh, assumed from here that it's uh, basically an even playing field. You know, no, I don't feel that one player really has the advantage over the other. Especially since uh, Squin is about to make it 5-5, five, five, assuming his Dialga is faster, and uh, Draco is this bulk up Dialga into dust, or, you know, Earth Power. Good move, hits, uh, has a lot of good coverage, and being able to hit Dialga super effectively with is uh, much preferable to dinking away with Dragon Pulse or minus 2 yourself with Draco. So, yeah, he's, uh, it's now 5-4. Uh, and Squin has a healthy Dialga. So in comes Darkrai, and that's a classic component of DOS offense, because what do you do when you sacrifice a Pokemon for hazards? And, you know, the hazards are great, but how do you tangibly regain that put one Pokemon down advantage? Well, you sleep something. And uh, Darkrai is going to Dark Void, and then Mewtwo comes in. Not a great absorber. Ooh, that's rough. That is a rough Void miss. As Mewtwo, I mean, unless it's a Lumberry, in which case, very cool. Uh, that's a great offbeat uh, kind of method for one time checking Darkrai. Because a lot of time when you're checking Darkrai on offense, you know, a one time good check is all you need. You don't need to pack something that can hard counter it throughout the game, or else you'd never not use Spidef Kyogre uh, with Rest Talk. So uh, Scizor comes into the. 
uh, Dark Rye, and it looks fairly safe. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean... <coughs> Excuse me. I got so excited over the prospect of Mewtwo potentially using Fire Blast even on a rain team because there's also potentially a Groudon in the back. So just because there's a Kyogre does not necessarily preclude it from using fire coverage. Uh, so if Conflict wanted to U-turn, it would be very reasonable to do so. But he uh, makes a great play and goes to Giratina O and uh, Squingest or Spheres again. Uh, now, I guess he didn't want to give up any... I guess he was trying to cut his losses if he didn't want to get you turned around on. I guess that's a... Pr that's actually... Uh, well, we don't know the rest of his team yet, so it might make more sense in hindsight. But getting uh, more damage on the scissor so it's basically unable to check anything else is pretty good. And... Because uh, he might be trying to set up an end game for something. The scissor doesn't have lefties, and he's assumingly got some dragon moves, or some dragon pokes, that really like a 40% scissor. So, uh, and if he feels uh, Mewtwo's not going to be... It, it's not worth it getting you turned around on with rocks and spikes just to lose a Pokemon anyway, so it's better to... And I uh, definitely... Uh, can get behind that logic is you know with rocks and spikes littering your side of the field and no hazards of your own Then you want to limit your switches where possible so that aura sphere was a smart move It winds up not connecting with the Giratina's conflict made a good move and scouted for the fire move so Now he goes back to scissor on the ice beam uh, assured that well what he's got to be scared of actually now at this point is uh, thunder uh, which probably would not KO, but it would definitely bring him close. And he gets a lot more, uh, he gets more damage, around 50%, 15% more than he would have expected to otherwise. So, uh, he's now, it's now 4-4, four to four, but, uh, again, Conflict has another Pokemon with three quarters of his health gone. So, Squin's getting a lot of uh, mileage out of his Pokemon, despite the hazard deficit. So, in comes a Jirachi, which... If it's Scarf, then that's good, because uh, another p reason why you want Scissor Chipped, uh, it makes your Scarf Iron Heads more threatening. So, that's if it a uh, U turns, he does not Iron Head, as Conflict stays in, that was a good move. Scout the Jirachi set, if it Iron Heads and flinches you, so what? It's uh, gonna be a 3 KO, nothing horrible. So, and uh, you can that uh, learn what it's gonna lock itself into, learn its set. So now, uh, Squin U-turns out instead of Iron Heading and goes to his own Darkrai, which absorbs a sleep with Lum. So now we're in a... <laughs> well, this is a, this is a speed tie, no, no two ways about it. As uh, Conflict's uh, Darkrai shows lefties, so that's, that could suggest Substitute, which is a great set. Or it, it could just suggest that uh, he doesn't like getting worn down by uh, passive damage. By offsetting it, he might put himself out of range for revenge killing attempts, which is also valuable. Anyway, speed tie time, and Conflict wins the second one and hits the second Void, which is probably fair for... Well, we don't know if the Mewtwo was uh, Lum or not. It, it didn't uh, get a chance to show any Expert Belt damage, so that's also possible and the other likely option, but Lum would be cool too. Dual Lum on Rai and Mewtwo would be pretty awesome to see. Anyway, so now uh, Darkrai's got to uh, get out of there and... Uh, Conflict actually plays it safe and doesn't focus blast as Diago comes in to a thunder. So, uh, no, I guess he was trying to uh, hit Jirachi just as hard, but with the extra pair chance. And hey, that's what thunder is for. So he hits the focus blast and down goes Diago. So now it's looking like, well, it depends on the unrevealed poke, and you know never count out Jirachi. But Ubers is generally pretty resilient to scarf Rachi Iron Heads, and there are no hazards up. So. It uh, depends on what Squin's last is. Now, the last for Squin definitely has to be a ground resist of some sort. Uh, so whether it's Latios or Tina O or, you know, something, because otherwise Garchomp and Groudon just EQ and all day long. So uh, Drachi comes back in and it's probably going to Iron Head here because from that range it's probably a 2 a KO. Yep. And uh, Conflict breaks through it. Thunders, no para. But the hit is good because now Scizor can bullet punch. It's now in range for CB bullet punch. And, uh, you know, Giratina Shadow Sneak as well. So the Iron Head crits doesn't do very much. And uh, Sneak is going to take it out. So here comes Darkrai, hoping it wakes up. Uh, but it does not after after one turn. And it's Ray. So there is, a, there is in fact, the ground resist. So... Uh, at this point, 
uh, it would take somewhat of a miracle for Conflict to lose this one, especially with the Ray having Life Orb. So he goes to Scizor and finishes it off with a crit, but yeah, that was being won anyway. So Conflict goes up 1-0. Game 2. DOS on the other side this time. Conflict has Ray, so Ray's going to try and Draco into E-Speed, uh, or maybe predict the switch. DOS is going to hazard into... You know, maybe go for a second hazard, or if uh, Squint has E-Speed of his own, he'll want to use it to break the Ray Sash. Or he might switch out, depending on what he's got. So, spikes, no uh, no Stealth Rock, that's always a, that's always helpful when you don't have to choose, but when you're not limited to just Stealth Rock and not able to get spikes. That's one of the advantages of having a, uh, of spreading out your hazards. Of course, sometimes it's great to just lead off with rocks and spikes and then unleash Havoc with the rest, but that's what different teams are for. Anyway, so... Uh, Draco goes off, and here comes the second turn. So, E-Speed from DOS, E-Speed from Ray, switches out, or switches out from DOS, you know, predicting the switch from Conflict, who knows? Uh, and there is the E-Speed, so yeah, it's a lot easier to hazard into E-Speed when you know you're not giving up rocks. Such a crummy feeling to uh, give up spikes when you're rocking with DOS in such a situ situation, even though you don't mind you know, to break the Ray Sash and prevent it from taking out a second one of your pokes, but still not great. So with spikes, that's much a much more comfortable feeling, and that's why uh, attack or spikes, dedicated spikes, uh, DOS leads with flexibility in uh, the move set. You know, not necessarily scarf. That's why they are so good and you know really underappreciated. I hope you see more of them. Uh, for you know this reason exactly, and in comes Palkia, which is a great potential uh, Ray Revenge Killer because it is faster and a lot of teams will revenge Ray with something like Scarf Diago, which is great and all, but I mean, there's a lot of ways that that leaves him vulnerable, not just the Wobbuffet that comes in, but uh, Palkia outspeeds it naturally, or it could be something like Latios as well, but Palkia has a lot of ways it can go with its set and it also punishes the assumption that it's choice uh, very often. So in comes Wob directly into Palkia, which is definitely ballsy. But uh, Spatial Ren bounces off, so that does not look Lustrous Orb by my estimate. You know, certainly not Specs or anything. So, uh, yeah, if the... I was going to say, if Palkia has a physical move, then now would be the time to use it. You know, Aqua Tail is the best one, but, you know, even Focus Punch can put some weird ideas in Wob's head. Because if it encores on, you know, Spatial Rend, then it's in danger. And of course, Sub is uh, really good because now, Sub uh, Palkia, now it doesn't have Lefty, so who knows what item it has. It'd be Sub Salix, Sub Custap, something exciting, I'm sure. Uh, maybe even Sub Lum. Uh, that would be a really good way of uh, messing up teams that rely on hazards. So the Sub, uh, yeah, the Sub goes off, and... Now, Spatial Rend is free as Mirror Coat breaks the sub, but it looks like, oh, okay, and, you know, it looked like uh, Wob was at 37-ish, so it probably would have lived the space, or had a chance to live the Spatial Rend, but uh, Palkia hydros it anyway, and down goes Wob. So this is one of the many awesome things Palkia can do. Now, with uh, Spatial and Hydro and Sub, then you assume, okay, it's a Kyogre check, it probably has Thunder. Still, sending Scizor into it is, you know, pretty, pretty ballsy. But, uh, you know, just launching a Hydro like that is really, really brutal. And I now I suddenly want to check the Calc. Uh, because that... It didn't feel like it was a Lustrous Orb against Wob, but my head Calc's been really off lately. So, no, yeah, Lustrous... Yeah, okay, Lustrous was going to do more. Yeah, alright. So, I think it's just a Scizor without too much special defense investment on that Hydro. So... Uh, phew, I feel validated. Anyway, Ray comes in, and uh, the E-Speed is very obvious, but you know, either way, uh, Palkia has you know limited Scizor to one more switch and taken out a Wob, so it's already put in a ton of work. And uh, Squint still has a hazard advantage, so Conflict makes a great prediction. Uh, that was a tough move to make, but it was... Because, you know, Squin could have easily just said, Alright, I'm just going to sag Palkia to get a free switch to something else. But that was a great move from Conflict, recognizing, Look, I don't want Scarf Diaga coming in for free. I'm just going to EQ, and if he goes to Scarf Diaga, then I will have made a... Uh, I will have put myself back in it. So, that you know, pr big props to Conflict on that one. Uh, the Kyogre, he probably doesn't want to stay on it, because it doesn't have lefties, and if Kyogre switching into Ray good odds that it's going to be Scarf, especially with the non-Scarf Palkia. 
So, uh, Ice Beam and a Freeze, yikes, as Conflict's own Kyogre comes in to absorb it and uh, has lefties. So now in comes Ray again, hoping that the uh, Kyogre was going to switch out since it was locked into th uh, Ice Beam, and hopefully something would come in that Ray could threaten out. But turns out it is not a choice Kyogre. So combination of good bluff, and if you're expecting to switch into E-Speed, then you can still take the follow of Draco or Outrage. So a uh, little bit of little bit of a bluff, a little bit of I can still take the hit even if uh, I switch into it. And this way you don't have to lock into a Scarfer. Although with Wob down, then you know it's pretty free to lock into a uh, move with the Scarfer against what is clearly a very offensive team. So Thunder does not pair, but, uh, but it was also 70% uh, to hit because Airlock. So Draco just barely, you see if EQ plus Draco it doesn't KO, then E-Speed, Draco definitely wouldn't have. And uh, might not even have Outrage, might be Brick Break. So Draco just barely comes up short, Ice Beam finishes Ray off. And uh, so Squin is looking, I mean he's got two Pokemon picked off by priority, but he's also got three very healthy Pokemon, whereas Conflict has a nearly KO'd Scizor uh, fr and a frozen, um, and a frozen, uh, what's it called? Uh, Kyo I'm looking right at it, Kyogre, at uh, less than full health. And uh, Squin ne still needs a Rocker, which is probably going to be something sturdy. And if it's Dialga, as it so often is, then it can handle Giratina O. So... Uh, it's a Bronzong, which is not the worst answer by a long shot. Can take Thunders all day. Doesn't have lefties, which is rare. And uh, he gets up the rocks, and that's actually a great move. Not just because, you know, chip, but because by getting up rocks there, you KO Scizor. So now it's no more than Death Fodder. It will not uh, get up another, it will not get a move off. So now Bronzong is pretty much just relegated to chipping Giratina into KO range for one of the remaining Pokemon on Squin's team. Uh, ostensibly a dragon type move that Giratina would live at full health, but para full para, and it is not Custap or Lum. Uh, so that is unfortunate. So, but what's he got left? Uh, here, yep, Ray, so he doesn't need chip on it with Ray because Ray is really strong. So the, uh, he just goes for Outrage. I think he could have sacked. Well, I guess it depends on what his last is, but if he sacked a Scizor there, then he could have just gone to the faster thing after. No way was Ray ever setting up there. He was too far ahead to uh, risk that. So in comes Ogre, which is... Uh... Oh, and Squint says in the chat that it was a Screens Bronzong, so the item was Light Clay. Very cool. So uh, the Ray uh, rips through the Kyogre cleanly, and it is uh, Kingdra last... So that's his form of speed, but because of airlock, then Ray is going to nullify Swift Swim, and down it goes. So the score is now one to one. And a fun fact: if you're looking on the rocker for, for looking for the rocker on Conflict's team, he said he forgot to include a rocker, which uh, happens to the best of them sometimes. So game three, Mew lead, awesome. Doa lead. So with Mew, you can you're probably going to want to get up rocks just so you're not falling behind early. I mean, if you get Shadow Ball, you get Shadow Ball. You're not going to get KO'd, and you can switch out and deal with the DOA with something else. Uh, and you don't want to not be able to get up. You don't want to start off with a hazard deficit if you can help it. And you definitely can help it. So, uh, very like. Then there are the rocks and the spikes from both, or the hazards from both. And then DOA gets the Shadow Ball off, chunks Mew nicely, but Mew's gotten its rocks up. So, not bad. Now it'll probably go to a Priority Poke or a Scarf Jirachi, which will. Uh, outrun and threaten with U-turn, so if DOA stays in, KO, switch out, get the switch advantage. So, uh, U-turn will now bring in DOA, and we s have seen, uh, we've not seen, actually no, we saw one uh, mid-game DOA prior to this, if I'm remembering the order of matches correctly. So, Heatran is... Uh, we've also been seeing a trend in this tournament of a DOA, you know, DOA leads with like bulky Pokemon, something you generally didn't see much before. So uh, Heatran protects just to scout what the DOA is going to do and, you know, uh, fish for some leftovers. And that winds up being a big mistake as DOA subs. I think this set was inspired by the standard set in. Okay, yes, play music, please. 
by uh, the standard set in advanced Ubers, the sub Pattaya one, which is sub Thunder Ice Beam Superpower. Now, I don't know if this is Pattaya or you know the more likely option of just Expert Belt, but sub is really nasty because uh, p- uh, people will generally scout DOA with or pivot around DOA by switching into moves they resist, you know, Garatina O on superpower and whatnot. And with sub, you uh, take that away, and you also punish protect, obviously, but, uh, you know, not many things are too, are running protect, much less, well, I guess now, you know, things like protect Diaga and Groudon are probably, you know, now they're going to be more hesitant now that sub DOA has, you know, appeared, but before, they definitely would be like, oh, what's the worst it's going to do? It can't, like, call mind or anything, so I'm just going to uh, protect for free leftovers. So, yeah, that is going to punish it pretty hard. Uh, Scouting the switch is the main purpose. So, Conflict sacks his DOA, and Superpower goes off, and Lugia comes in, and that's generally not a great sign. Now, most teams, this is why sub-DOA is good, because most teams are not going to be able to counter DOA, because, you know, it's pretty uncounterable on paper. And uh, so, if you don't, if it's running Ice Beam Thunder Superpower and there's not like a Bronzong or a Bulky Jirachi, then odds are that they're going to have to play around it. Uh, and with Sub, you take away that power of uh, predicting around it and, and uh, revenge killing, obviously. You know, Tina O can't really revenge kill you with Sneak Reliably if you're behind a Sub. And since so many Pokemon that uh, might pivot in are slower, then uh, you are getting a lot of attacks off, two attacks off either way. And what separates that from just swi- uh, attacking on the switch is that you are getting the best percentage of your attacks because you are scouting what's being switched in before you choose before you make your move. So, uh, yeah, so Lugia is coming in, and that's not a good answer as Ice Beam is going to do a ton of damage, and it shows Life Orb at least, so we can Life Orb stall it. And Conflict goes for Calm Mind, which is definitely a misplay because even if it's expert i assume he was because he took some time to calc he went down from full timer to uh to 150 so i assume he was uh thinking expert belt and maybe he could take to expert belt uh from expert belt ice beam from neutral or and uh into the second one after a calm mine and they can you know recover up and be fine you know, barring luck, or maybe maybe the DOA is a plus special attack. You know, uh, it could actually I would definitely run that if I were running DOA because it still outruns everything else unboosted. So maybe he didn't expect that. Maybe he just defaulted to plus speed. Uh, either way, breaking the sub was definitely going to be more reliable as DOA takes it out. And you know, sub and life orb that's a lot of recoil. But if you're doing if you're getting it in at full health. And, uh, you know, great combination of Jirachi uh, U-turning in to set DOA up because DOA switches into nothing, but with U-turn, you take that problem away. Anyway, and then you set up the sub from full health, and, you know, unless you're doing it in sand or something, then you're not going to be getting worn down too badly. So, see, now Conflict is uh, in this, you know, switch around until Life Orb KOs it game, which is going to be hard because every one of its attacks hit really hard and rocks are on the field, so even if you switch Heatran into Ice Beam here and then switch into Superpower more, then you're still sustaining a lot of damage. I mean, yes, admittedly, you know, Mew, it's not like uh, Squint has five massive threats after. I mean, Scarfarachi is hardly the pinnacle of offense in this tier, and Mew is not exactly a world destroyer either, but uh, he's still going to be packing some threats, and he's still taking a lot of damage just switching around this thing. And that's if Squin doesn't predict at all, and he has three more Life Orb hits. So in comes Dialga into the minus one superpower. I guess he was afraid of getting ground on Ice Beam and thought this was kind of a middle ground, but I don't know. I think you either stay in with Heatran, you know, cut the losses, stay and uh, stay in with Heatran, or, um, or or just make your previous move to Groudon, because Dialga just sustains more damage. Uh, he makes a good turn at, uh, move after, and knows the Ice Beam is coming, so he doesn't, because it, it'll finish Dialga off from low health, and uh, he doesn't need to weaken himself further with superpower, so he can just Ice Beam in case Groudon comes in. So Conflict makes a good move going back to Heatran, and you know now DOA is down to its last Life Orb hit, and here Conflict can protect freely, and you know the, the last move is almost surely going to be superpower, but even at minus two, it's going to sting Heatran if it stays in, and uh, he does not stay in. He decides to sacrifice the Diaga, so that DOA killed a whole lot. 
as it finally succumbs to its own life orb from behind the sub. So in comes Mew, hoping to uh, you know blow up on something slower, which is faster than both Groudon and Heatran. That'll be helpful. I mean, Heatran can protect, but there's also Taunt, Mind Games. Anyway, Conflict does have something faster. He has a Latios, and uh, that's going to Draco and miss and uh, get crit by U-turn. So that was real bad. Uh, yeah, if he gets that KO, well, we don't know the rest of his team. Afterwards, uh, Scarf Jirachi comes in a U-turn, so it depends what else he had. But uh, that was a really, really bad one. That erased all chance. As now Mew, well, Mew coming in as the Heatran switch in here, you know, obviously betrays a, you know, maybe I'm not able to hit Heatran too well kind of thing. He uh, taunts and uh, forces, so uh, Conflict makes a great move, not protecting on the boom, just Lava Pluming taking it out. But here comes Wob, so that was a very measured play from Squin, you know, forcing Heatran to attack and now it gets mirror coated and taken out. And, uh, well, I, I guess he theoretically could still lose a Groudon or something, but... It's uh, it's unlikely with two fully healthy Pokemon, and you know Groudon might not even be able to get past Wob as uh, he encores, flick, uh, locks into Lava Plume, so he can't immediately get countered. But then he's not gonna, he's gonna get, uh, he's not gonna finish it off with the second one, uh, unless he double crit. So Squint is going to take this series. So this is an interesting one. Uh, uh, Squint definitely had some interesting teams. I. Uh, I applaud the ambition in them. Anyway, so that has been this series, and thank you guys for watching. Thanks to both players, and I will catch you guys in the next one.